Hello there, everybody. This is Ayman Al-Ghazali from thesequelpro.com. And today I'm going to be presenting a SQL snack on SQL Server instant file initialization. So, our agenda for today is we're going to talk about firstly what instant file initialization is, and then we're going to talk about why we should use it and how to enable it. So, without further ado, instant file initialization basically prevents database files from zeroing out or zero filling upon creation and growth. Right? And this is only for database files, not for log files. And I'll explain that via a picture. Imagine this is your hard disk and <clears throat> you're doing a, a file delete. Right? So what happens is when you delete a file, the operating system marks that portion on the disk as available for reuse. But whatever data is there, still there until you actually start overwriting it. So for example, let's say you know you got um, a one here and a zero here. But pretty bad. Say so you got a uh, you know you got a, a one and a zero and a one and a zero, for example. That's going to stay like that until another process comes and overwrites that with something else. You know, like a zero, zero, one, zero, or whatever it is, right? But when you do a file er erasure, for example, like if you use the program Eraser or any of those programs that nuke your hard drive, what happens is it actually writes on top of that file. You know, it's going to write zeros or, or ones or whatever it's going to write. Sometimes some of these programs write ra random data. So you can see the difference between deletion and erasure. And the same is with instant file initialization. So when instant file initialization is turned off, what happens is when your data file is created, SQL Server is going to zero out the space that is allocated for that data file. And when you turn instant file initialization on, what it does is it instantly initializes that file. It doesn't zero it out first. So if there was data in that section of the drive, it's going to be there. And you know that portion is just going to be allocated to a data file and it's going to overwrite it eventually. So when you start to create your databases with IFI or instant file initialization turned off, what happens is it's going to zero out that data file every time you create a data file. And it's also going to do that when your data file grows. So let's say that you restart your server and you have predefined temp DB files. You know, you, you've set it up properly where they're growing to their to their maximum size so they don't um, continuously auto grow while while production systems running. What happens is that tempdb is going to rebuild and it's going to zero out the entire file. And any auto grows that happen on your data file are going to be zeroed out uh, while they're while the growth is occurring. And with instant file initialization turned on, that isn't the case. So it can give you some performance grade um, improvements, excuse me. And that's why it's useful because it makes database file creation and growth faster. Also, you know, that means that tempdb can be rebuilt faster. Imagine that you're restarting SQL services or you're failing over a cluster, for example, like an FCI, a failover cluster instance, is going to have to rebuild that tempdb. So with instant file initialization turned on, it could save you, you know, a few seconds, maybe even a minute, depending on the size of your tempdb. And the question is, who doesn't want a performance boost? I mean, this is a, a great, easy way to get a performance boost on file database file creation and growth, as well as tempdb um, creation. And at the same time, I just need to make a note that it does not affect log files. It only affects uh, data files. And it does not work with databases that use transparent data encryption, TDE. And there are a few other rules um, that you know, I'm not going to discuss here. But one of the things to note is generally a, a good database administrator will create a data file according to the size that they think that the database is going to grow. So, you know, that initial data file creation could be sped up and subsequent growths could be sped up as well, especially if you have a system with multiple databases that might be growing all at the same time, you would gain significant performance improvements. Finally, how do you set it up? There are two ways. There's the crazy way, which you add SQL Server service 
um, the service account as an admin on the entire server. I mean, this, this works, but it's dangerous. It's not the proper way to do it. The right way is to add SQL Server servers to the perform volume maintenance tasks under security policy, and I'll show you how to do it in a second here. Um, it can be found under Control Panel, Administrative Tools, Local Security Policy, and I'll go through that. Um, you also use these trace flights to test, and I'll show that in a quick demo. And um, here's an explanation of what they do. And finally, uh, we'll use this sort procedure to read the error log so we can see that instant file initializes and turned on. And here we go to the demo. Got my server up and running here. I'm going to turn the trace flag on. And I'm going to create a database with a data file that is one gig in size. I'm going to record how long that takes uh, to finish, five seconds. And I'm going to run the store procedure to take a look at the error log. I scroll toward the bottom here, I'll see that my trace flag has been turned on. And these two lines indicate that the data file was being zeroed out upon creation. I'm going to turn these trace flags off, and I'm going to drop my database. And now I'm going to turn instant file initialization on. So first I'm going to go to my SQL Server Configuration Manager, see what account um, is being used as you know to start the SQL Server service. And then I'm going to go to the control panel. I'm going to click on administrative tools, followed by local security policy. And when this comes up, I'm going to go under local policies, user rights assignment, and find this policy here called perform volume maintenance tasks. And then I'm going to add my SQL account that starts the SQL Server agent. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go back to Management Studio and I'm going to restart my SQL Service. And now I'm going to try the same thing. I'm going to turn the trace flag on and I'm going to create uh, my one gigabyte database. And as you saw, it took less than one second to create this time. I'm going to look at my error log here. Again, scroll down toward the bottom. And I'll see that the trace flag was turned on. And the zeroing only occurred on the log file, not on the data file. And that's why creating the data file took a lot less time. So imagine if you have a large TempDB that you've um, put together and you know maybe it's 50 gigs or 100 gigs when you restart your server it's going to be created much faster uh, and if you're doing failover with you know failover clusters SQL failover clusters um, you are going to get that added benefit as well um, the failover recovery time is going to be a lot faster um, there is one small security um, issue with this is that obviously when allocating the space for a data file the, that space is not being zeroed out. So if there was data there before, there's a potential that that data could be recovered. But you're talking about someone, you know, breaking in your data center and taking that hard drive and recovering the data off of there. So if someone breaks into your data center, you probably have bigger issues to worry about. Setting up instant file initialization is easy. It's a little bit different for a failover cluster instance. There's plenty of great documentation out there. Uh, it's pretty much the same process except when selecting the SQL service um, account. It gets a little hairy, let's say. Um, so anyways, I hope you enjoyed this SQL snack, and I wish you the best of performance gains using instant file initialization. Thank you.